SDR. Then uh, we, def we found that the potential of a single point charge is equal to KQ over R. And we saw that the potential at infinity was defined to be zero. Okay, So potential at infinity is defined to be zero by definition. And then we saw that if we want to find the potential of a continuous charge distribution, then we need to integrate KDQ over R. And then we define potential energy is the Q delta V. So the potential energy difference, the potential energy uh, that, a, uh, that a charge loses or gains is defined as the charge of that uh, particle times the difference of the potential created by the second particle. Okay. Uh, and then this is the potential energy between two point charges because uh, the potential created by, by the first charge is equal to KQ over R, and then the second charge is the Q2. Okay, so that's the potential energy, and we call that binding energy. So if two, char two charges are opposite charge, the potential energy is going to be negative, right? So if Q1 is positive or negative, and Q2 is an opposite charge, negative or positive, then their potential energy is going to be negative, which means they like to be together. If in order to cause them to move apart, you got to apply a force to it. So then, then the system likes to come together. So uh, in order to cause them to move apart, we got to apply uh, uh, some more amount of work. We have to apply work, which equals to the absolute value of u. We got to apply work, which equals the absolute value of u, to ionize the charges, or to separate them. If the charges are the same, if Q1 equals plus minus, and Q2 equals plus minus, if the charges are the same, then their potential energy is positive which means they're going to repel each other and their potential energy is going to decrease. So they're going to, by themselves, they're going to uh, go apart, you know. Then the potential energy is uh, positive. Then the system so then the system repels each other and moves apart. So at this time, if we want to keep the system in from moving apart, we got to apply work to keep them together. Okay? So we have to apply work, which equals to u. This time u is positive, so I don't have to take its absolute value. So we have to apply work to keep them together. We have to apply work to keep them together. So now you kind of see the idea. Now, if we, we can make a table here to summarize whatever we have learned in chapters 23, 24, and 25. Um, Okay, a single charge by itself, we have learned in chapter 23 that a single charge creates an electric field around it.
So you don't need the second charge or you don't need a third charge for the electric field. Every single charge by itself creates an electric field. And if I have multiple charges, if I want to find the electric field at a certain position, I add their electric fields to find the total electric field there. Okay. A single charge we learned in chapter 25, single charge creates a potential around it. So notice potential is uh, scalar. There's no vector sign. And it's R here. It's not R squared. So a single charge creates a potential field around it. And we call these equal potential surfaces. OK, equal potential surfaces. And you don't need the second charge or third charge. And if, I, if there's multiple charges, and if I want to find a total potential at a certain place, I add their potentials created by each. OK? Two or more charges together exert a force. F equals k q1 q2 r hat over r squared. Two or more charges exert a force on each other. And if there's multiple charges and I want to find the total force on a certain charge, I add the force between each of them. But since it's a vector, it's, uh, it's kind of a complicated way of doing that. You've got to break it up into x and y components. And two or more charges have potential energy with each other. OK, so u equals kq1, q2 over r. So two charges, if they're opposite charge, they're bound together with a negative potential energy. And if they're uh, same charge, they, uh, they want to go apart because they have positive potential energy. So notice the symmetry of this. This and this, V and E, are similar in the sense that a single charge creates a potential. Single charge creates an electric field. Okay, they only have one Q and one Q. This and this are similar because uh, you need two charges. You need two charges to exert a force on each other, and you need two charges to have potential energy. So these two are similar in the sense that you need two charges. Now these two are similar that because you need one charge. You only need one charge. This and this are similar how? They are, starts with S, and then C, scalar, yeah. So these two are similar in that they are scalars, you see. So if I want to find the total potential at a certain point, I simply add it. I don't need to break it up into components. And if I want to find the total potential energy of a whole system, all I do is just add the potential energy between two of them and you just keep adding like a scalar. So they add like scalars. And then these two are similar because they are vectors. OK? And not only that, these two are similar because they have only one r, not the r squared. So they're scalar and only r in denominators. OK, these two are similar because they are vectors and have, uh, have uh, r squared in denominators. So they're vectors, and they have r squared in their denominator. So you see now you can see the full picture of the different quantities. And as far as units, let, let's write down the units. This is volts. This is joules. This is newtons. And this has two units, newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. Newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. So now this is the full summary of all these quantities. Okay, let's now do a problem.